I had a plan to go to Sudan with my girl Suzanne. Then we took a van to Japan for a can of Raisin Bran. Look, I've been alone and malnourished, living in a trailer with no furnace. I'm burning up in the summer because ain't no AC. Cinnamon, cinnamon, all cinnamon, cinnamon, all. Well, guys, it feels good to be back. It's been a while since we've done a Darman video, and that's mainly because I've been trying to save these for the real stinkers. And, uh, well, let me just tell you that it's about to get really smelly, okay? He made another one. Over the last, like, six months or so, I would say, we've talked a few times about this new genre of content that Darman is putting out, where it's not a life lesson, it's not one of his normal corny stories. Stories. It's just a direct rip of a popular movie. He steals the concept, he steals the characters, he steals basically everything that the movie has to offer, mixes up the script a little bit, and condenses it down to about 25 or 30 minutes. There's no creativity, there's no originality whatsoever, it's literally just him plagiarizing popular films. It's really cool. And you know, for a while, I really thought that was about as bad as it could get, at least concept wise. The videos themselves were often not the worst we've ever seen, they were bad though, but the concept was really slimy to me, basically just plagiarizing these popular and successful movies to essentially sell them back to your younger audience who hasn't heard of the originals. Like, it's one thing to not be creative and make bad videos because of that. That's excusable. Taking a beloved movie and then putting forth the least effort possible to shit out a reproduction for the sole purpose of making some money? Not the greatest thing to do, right? Well, maybe not. You see, these are the things that I believed before today. I used to think that this concept of a darn man video was the worst that he had to offer. And while trust me, I still think it's pretty bad, something new has stepped onto the podium. It's a very similar concept, but there is one key difference. Darman attempted to not copy the source material. Now, you might hear that and you might think, okay, that sounds like a pretty good thing, right? Well, in theory, sure, but for that to be true in practice, the person putting a spin on the original movie has to be a good writer, they have to be creative, right? Well, you know what we're dealing with here, so I'm sure you recognize the problem. Bully doesn't know Poor Kid is a rap god, inspired by Eminem. When I try and tell you guys that this might just be the absolute worst way that anybody could have ever tried to recreate the movie 8 Mile, I'm not exaggerating, okay? The ending of this video is so forcibly shoehorned in that I'm kind of surprised this video got uploaded, which is what I want to focus on today. I'm breaking my rules here, okay? I'm going off the script. Unlike all my other Darman videos, we're not watching this one from beginning to end. Now, hear me out. I have good reasons for this. One is because I've watched this video like three times through. That's an hour and a half of Darman, by the way, to make sure that I'm not going insane, to make sure that I'm not missing something. And two, because it's not not really relevant to why I'm making this video. We're gonna be watching like the last five or six minutes, and I promise you, it's gonna make sense why we're doing that. Please subscribe. So let me set the scene for you before we get into those last five or six minutes. If you've never seen the movie 8 Mile, I would recommend you give it a watch. It's a pretty good movie. It's like a dramatized autobiography, but not really, of the early life of Eminem. The general plot of the movie is that Eminem, or I think his name's like B-Rabbit in the movie, is an aspiring rapper who's trying to make a name for himself through these local rap battles. And the main conflict of the movie is between Eminem and his crew and the leaders of the Free World, a rival rap group, aka the bad guys. Eminem makes friends with this guy who has some sort of tie to a record label. His name is Wink. But he's kind of playing both sides and sort of acts as a middleman between Eminem's crew and the leaders of the free world because he's helping both of them try and get promo work. I think I'm pretty sure that's what's going on. The leaders of the free world and Eminem's crew fight a few times. They get into verbal disagreements and Wink is always the one to break them up. Staying on relatively good terms with both sides until Wink has sex with Eminem's girlfriend. Eminem beats up Wink and in retaliation, Wink goes to the leaders of the free world and they jump Eminem outside of his trailer. They beat the shit out of him. They almost kill him. And in order to get revenge, Eminem decides to battle rap the leaders of the free world. That sounds kind of goofy, but it makes more sense in the movie. He battles the first few members and wins with ease. And in the climax of the movie is the battle between Eminem and the leader of the leaders of the free world. And then it's the famous clip that I'm sure a lot of people have seen from 8 Mile, even if they've never seen the movie, where Eminem predicts 
predicts everything that the guy is going to say about him, and then essentially wins the battle by bringing up positive things about the guy that he's rapping against. He completely discredits the guy by proving that he's not really who he says he is. He didn't grow up on the streets, he went to a private school, his parents have a good marriage, he lives at home with him, and his name is Clarence. No offense to any Clarences out there, that's just a movie, okay? And then everybody loves Eminem. Now, all of that is sort of a simplification, but I think it's enough, if you haven't seen the movie, to understand why this Darman video is so bad. Oh, yeah, by the way, spoiler alert, my bad. But as you can probably tell from my description, at least hopefully, the scenes that I just described are what everything in the movie is leading up to. Everything that happens essentially pushes this rap battle into happening, and this rap battle, in a pretty simplified sense, essentially solves all of the conflict created by the events. My point here basically boils down to similarly to every other movie that's ever been made, everything that happens in the movie is to build to the climax, to build to the resolution. So when you take one of those elements away, but you leave the other one in, it really doesn't work. And that's what Darman did. I guess because of the sort of graphic and gritty nature of the first like hour and a half of the Eight Mile movie, he didn't want to include any of that in his video, but he did want to include the rap battle because that's the famous part of the movie. So what we have in this Darman video is like 25 minutes of nothing, and I really mean absolutely nothing, not a single thing that happens in the movie Eight Mile. It is completely different. It looks like it's loosely based off some of the stuff that went on in Eminem's real life, but the end of the video is still a copy of the rap battles from Eight Mile. So everything just completely collapses in on itself. There's no rival crew. There's no like consistent villain throughout the video. There's no motivation to go beat a specific group of people or somebody in a rap battle, which would be fine if they were just trying to do some sort of video on the story of Eminem, which I don't know why Darman would do that, but that would be fine if this final rap battle wasn't so obviously supposed to be the one from 8 Mile. But I'm sure you guys are sick of hearing me talk. I've been talking for like six minutes without showing you a single video, so I'm gonna do that now. Just prepare to cringe, okay? Because it's, it's kind of hard to watch. tonight. Coming back is one of y'all favorites here to spit some of those fresh rhymes. Give a hand for my man. Good night, boy! Okay, so this Kaniva guy, first time we see him the entire video. Don't believe me? Go fact check me. I know you won't, so I could just lie. Nobody's gonna go watch 30 Minutes of Darman just to prove me wrong, but I promise you, this is the first time we hear of him. This is not like an established villain. This guy does not know Eminem. Eminem does not know him. Keep that in mind. So welcoming for the first time tonight, a local boy, fresh out of county jail, <laughs> coming to us, recommended by none other than Mo himself. <laughs> so let's welcome. What's his name? Eminem. Please welcome Eminem. Okay, so before we get into this rap battle, I want you guys to really listen to what these two are saying. Like, really focus on the lyrics, really focus on the actual words that are being said. I'm curious to see if you come to the same conclusion that I did. Okay, let's get this started. DJ, drop the beat. Yo, straight from the block where the stories unfold in the heart of the hood where the nights are cold. It's right to the corner where dreams take flight under the street lights that cut through the night. Hey, you talk about the grind, you don't know the lows. I don't earn these scars. Everybody knows I'm like steel, man. You can't stop me. My rise to the top ain't something you could stop. Hey. Okay, so I'm gonna have to stop this right here for a moment. Look, I'm not a rapper, but I've listened to enough of it to know that this is either one, written by Darman himself, or two, and I think the more likely option, written by AI. These lyrics make no fucking sense whatsoever. So, first of all, he says something about Eminem talking about the grind. These two people have never met. Eminem has never said a single word to this guy, much less anything about the grind. Then he says, everybody knows I'm like steel, you can't stop me. What the fuck does that mean? Like, actually, what does that mean? What directly follows this is my rise to the top and son, you can't stop. Hey, that's not even like a complete thought. At first, I thought he was saying you can't stop me like I'm steel, referring to him not being able to stop his rise to the top, but that's not what he says. He just says my rise to the top and son, you can't stop. That means nothing. Hey, 
Hey, hey, okay, you don't know my life, boy, so don't speak too fast. Cause I seen my share of struggle and I'm built to laugh. I said I've earned my stripes. Yeah, I've been through it all while you've been sitting on your high horse just waiting to fall. Okay, so um, the second half was somehow even worse. I feel like I know exactly what happened. I feel like I know why this is not making sense. Darman put some sort of prompt into an AI generator, probably something like generate me 16 bars of a rap battle inspired by the movie 8 Mile. And since the rap battles in the movie 8 Mile are between two people who are taking multiple personal shots at each other with this sort of general theme on Eminem's side that he's talking about you don't really know who I am and you're just saying the same shit over and over again. That that got reflected into the script that the AI spit out for Darman, but that doesn't make sense because these two people don't know each other, and we're seeing that in full effect. Like, let's just look at the lyrics. You don't know my life, so don't speak too fast. The guy hasn't said a fucking word yet. You've been sitting on your high horse just waiting to fall. You're talking about the guy who was just introduced to you as someone who just got out of jail, and you're acting like he's sitting on a high horse going through zero struggle? What? Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Look. You think you see me, but you don't have a clue. You ain't got the first idea about what brought me to you. My life's been full of heartache and broken dreams. I'm looking for the bright side, but ain't no hope, so it seems. Look, I've been alone and malnourished, living in a trailer with no furnace. I'm burning up in the summer, cause ain't no AC. So if you really want to take this place away from me, son, I got a plan. Listen up, cause here's step one. Get a bulldozer, roll over from bottom to top. Cause that's the only way you're ever gonna be breaking the shot. What? the fuck does any of that mean? First of all, this is not a complaining contest. These two are just going back and forth about who struggled the most, and that's like, that's not what a rap battle is. Secondly, could somebody please explain to me, what does get a bulldozer roll over from bottom to top, because that's the only way you're ever going to be breaking a shot mean? Like, seriously, I don't know if I'm sleep deprived, I don't know if I'm filming this too late, I cannot make sense of that sentence whatsoever. That doesn't mean anything, right? Not bad. Not bad. But you ain't fucking up. This this little white boy. Yo, DJ, drop the beat. Guys, you don't have to egg them on. You don't have to chant diss them because that's the whole entire idea behind a rap battle. I mean, seriously, this just goes to show that Darman is basically out of his depth when talking about literally anything. Dissing is the core of battle rap. This is like going to a sports event and chanting, don't lose, don't lose, don't lose. I mean, like it's the entire point. <laughs> Y'all, can't you see? This guy ain't even a real MC. I know everything he's gonna say about me. I do have white skin. I do look real thin. I do stay with my mom in the trailer that I live in. So don't you dare judge me, dude. Cause you ain't know the first thing about what I've been through. Okay, so uh, hopefully at this point, you're starting to see why I think this video is so bad. Let's let's go back to the basics here one more time. You guys don't fucking know each other. He does not know that you live in a trailer park with your mom. You can't just do the whole eight mile thing without setting any of it up. It doesn't work. Also, I think we're being sort of unfair to Eminem's opponent here. I don't think that he choked. I personally think he's still just trying to figure out the whole bulldozer debacle. I still don't know what that means. But that's literally it. That's the end of the video. Somehow what Eminem here said wins him the rap battle, even though like 80% of the stuff that he says only makes sense within the context of the movie 8 Mile. Maybe the people at this rap battle have seen it? Big 8 Mile fans maybe? I don't really know how that works. What I do know is that this is the laziest attempt I've ever seen when it comes to Darman ripping off a movie. You can't just pick a movie to plagiarize based off the fact that it has a famous clip on YouTube and then disregard everything that makes that clip make sense just so you can lazily shoehorn the clip into the end of the video so you can profit off its likeness. That's not how that works. Well, guys, what do you think? Is Darman secretly ghostwriting for all the major rappers right now? I'm thinking it's a possibility. This video probably didn't make a whole lot of sense if you've never seen 8 Mile or if you've never seen the clips that are associated with 8 Mile. But if you have the time, go watch them. You can find the rap battle clips on YouTube and then come back and watch this rap battle again and everything will click. Seriously, I wasn't joking when I said I had to watch 
watch this video through multiple times just to make sure I wasn't missing something because the end of this video is forced in that badly. We keep finding new lows, Darman. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and walk on over to that subscribe button and touch it. It's free. It won't cost you anything. But for now, that's all I have for you today. Bye. Thank you.